Welcome to another episode of BJ Whitehat, and today a big shout out to Malware Analysis for Hedgehogs. Thank you so much. He's commented on a couple of my videos and give me some great advice. If you want to see things a little further than where I take them, he goes right into PE headers and all the rest of it. He gets really into it. So if you really want to get your teeth into it, go and have a look, subscribe, it's worth your while. Anyway, if you think what I do is worthwhile, subscribe here too. It'd be fantastic to have you join me and leave a comment. Right, after the break, we can have a look at an interesting stream somebody's pointed me to have a look at. So the first thing this person has spotted is a task that's running on their system. It's got a very unusual name and it's going to a temporary directory. Very, very unusual. So let's go and pop open this file and have a look at what's in this VBS file, shall we? The VBS file doesn't contain a heck of a lot, just a single line. It's going to use VBS to run a script and it's running something from program files logging. It's running a text file, which is not in itself such a problem. But look at this, colon, something else. So is it running a text file, or is it running the something else? Let's go and have a look at that folder, shall we? So here we are in that folder on that machine, and there's a logging.txt file. I'm just going to be careful, and I'm going to open this with Notepad++. It looks like some kind of a log file. doesn't actually even look like it's complete. So what could it be? There's no VBS file here. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Looking back at the content of that VBS script, we've got to go back and look at this a bit more carefully. So this colon represents a stream, sometimes called an alternative data stream. So this is the ability for a file, logging.txt, to have content in that file, but also fork the data and store something else. So in this case, it's kind of suggesting that somebody has copied a hidden VBS file into this logging.txt file, which is highly unusual. So first of all, let's kind of just prove that's where we're at. And one way we can do that, you can download streams.exe off of sysinternals off of Microsoft TechNet, or into Windows now, you can type in dir space slash r, which is what I'm opting to do. And here we have the results. Hmm, as you can see, the logging text file is only 121 bytes, but hidden behind it is another 3224 bytes. And that's stored as something else. So if we look in the directory, we only see logging.txt. If we look into it from Explorer, we only see logging.txt. If you have a look for streams, there's a stream here. So something is hiding in here. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about this. As I mentioned, it's an ADS, or an alternate data stream, also called an NTFS alternate stream or a name stream. It's well known amongst some of us guys that have been in the industry for a while, but it's an NTFS feature. It's the ability to fork the file data into existing files without affecting their functionality, size, or display to traditional file browsing utilities, or DIR as you saw, or Windows Explorer. So I can open that up with Notepad++, I can edit logging.txt, I can make changes to it, I can do whatever I like. I'm not actually going to change that VBS file, nor am I accidentally going to stumble into it. Yet that task has the ability to fire off that VBS file and do something with it. So we need to have a look and inside that VBS file and figure out what's going on. Already this smells a bit malware-ish. Something on here is not right. You've got the task, which has got a strange name, going to a temp directory running a strange VBS, to a VBS file on another volume that's kind of hidden behind a logging.txt file. Now, 
Now, something I've done, I've just created a folder on here called Virus so that I can place my files in there and play away without affecting anything. I know where everything in is virus related, or sorry, I should say malware related. Um, one of the things you can do is you can actually copy these files. So I've copied it here, logging.txt, and it will bring the data stream with it. From there, I can actually run this command and expand out that second file. So expand, which is something us old timers are very familiar with for expanding the old CAD files in the old day, or the files with the underscore at the end. Expand, logging.txt, and the VBS file that we know exists because it exists in that other VBS file, and where we're going to place it. So I've already created a folder structure to place it in. So I'm now going to run that patch file, and there we go, it's copied it out. So we'd best go and have a look and see what it is. This is the content that was hidden in that logging.txt file. So having a quick look at it, we can see they've made it hard to read because they've uppercased some characters, lowercased other characters. They're also going to encode it using base64. And here again, they've changed upper and lower case just to throw us off the scent. This is going to basically do my head in. It's very hard to read like this. So let's beautify it. Oh, before we do, look down here. We've got some uninstalls happening. We've got Defender, Virus, Antivirus, Trend, McAfee, Semantic. Oh, my goodness. And we've even got some websites we can see down the bottom here. Let's beautify it anyway, see what difference it makes. So up to my favorite, vbindent.com, I've just indented it and created better looking code. So now it's a lot easier to read through it. So I'm now going to copy that out into Notepad++ and have a bit more of a look at it. So here we have the malware in all of its glory. I can see that it's got functions. Now, I don't know why they tried to ossificate this so much, because even with the CT in their uppercase, um, it's still quite readable. And they've actually broken the functions down into things like Base64 encode, Base64 decode, string to bytes, there's nothing here that makes this hard to read. So I don't know quite why they've done that. Another one here, bytes to string. Okay, then it looks like we've got the actual body of it, which is going through, checks to see that Windows Shell is running, um, goes through and looks at uninstall strings for certain things. What have we got? Uh, looking for Defender, Virus, Antivirus. Ah, so that's how it determines what's running, is if it's listed as an uninstalled, app, sorry, an application you can uninstall. And then it goes through and sleeps for a little bit, uh, reads, reads the outputs, uh, looks in Security Center. Okay, so at this point, it's just trying to avoid antiviruses. So AVG. Okay, and then it fires off and goes and gets these PNG files from various websites which can only assume get renamed. In fact, here we go. We've got special folder created, ms underscore temp.exe, um, launch format, date, date, add. Interesting. So it's going to download and it's going to run an exe file. Um, it's then using the bits administrator for the um, downloading of uh, Windows updates and other bits and pieces of Microsoft download. They're going to use that to download an icon. Interesting. And they're going to go to the URL, which is obviously the URLs up here. And it's going to create a task and fire off that task. So this might be doing all the heavy work, but once it's done, you end up with an executable on your machine and it's running in your tasks and it's going off to a whole bunch of websites. Very curious. Let's see what uh, virus total and hybrid analysis make of this, shall we? So off at virus total, uh, pretty much it's confirmed, confirmed my thoughts. It's just a downloader. So it's downloaded and paved the way for that more serious executable. Um, there's not a lot of hits there at all, but it's just text. It's just a VBS downloader. And the community, what have we got here? We've got some analysis we can go and follow up on later. And Joe Sandbox. Hmm, okay. So it's first seen looks like about five months ago. Interesting, interesting. Right, one of the steps I neglected to mention is when I've actually got the file open in Notepad++, 
you'll notice it was more beautified than the website I went to. I used a feature in Notepad++ to do that, and I thought I might just take you through that today. Now here in Notepad++, when you've got this kind of thing going on, you can use the Replace tool to actually replace all these semicolons with a new line, and it understands how to do that. So under Search Replace, I put a semicolon in here. I put a slash N there, and down the bottom, I've got the extended turned on. When I do this, I'm going to hit Replace All, and watch what happens to the text behind me. Beautiful. It all lines up. That's because Notepad++ knows what to do with that. So that's why I use Notepad++. It's a great tool for sorting out your text straight away. Now, the other thing also before we go too far is somebody mentioned on my last video that I went to all the trouble to write a VBS file to download files so I don't get infected. I did that primarily to show you guys how it's done. But there is a tool you can use called wget. wget from the command line will also allow you to put in a URL and a file name and download it to your hard drive. WGET and the bits it needs to run are all available up on SourceForge. So I will include links to these products in the description below. You can download and use WGET yourself. So those PNG files that you saw that uh, were downloaded by the VBS code, we can use this tool to download those straight to the hard drive. Once we have those PNG files, which I think are going to become the executable, we can pass them up through VirusTotal or something like that. Now having a look up on multiverse you'll actually notice that somebody else has submitted this same file but it had a different name it was doc underscore 141 v2 dot doc dot vbs and they've gone through and done some analysis on it um, i can't see anything different what we already know we know about the host that it contacts we know that it tries to download some png files and that it probably tries to rename them let's go to hybrid analysis this gives us a bit more of an idea what's going on. So it gives us an idea it's got, uh, what have we got here, contacts one domain. Whoops, I shouldn't have clicked that, but here we go. Right down the bottom here, there's the one domain it goes to. It gives us a copy of the HTTP traffic. Again, if you sign up for hybrid analysis, you can actually download the WinPCAP file anyway, and you can pull that apart and look at it yourself. If we have a bit more of a look down here, so you've got some associated URLs, which have got VBS in them. Um, what else have we got? User bits admin. Well, we know that. We saw that in the code. It's got ossification. We saw that as well. I'm still not quite sure why they did it. Maybe it's hiding something that I didn't spot. Um, reads the cryptographic for the machine. Yes, drops executable files. Uh-huh. There we go. So I'm fairly confident that when it went up to those URLs to download those PNG files, they got renamed to exe files. Yep, creates a string there, does this, does that. Not a lot of interesting things here. Uh, modify proxy settings, interesting. Okay, so it's changing some zones for the internet zones. Probably making itself safe. Uh, installs hooks. Yep, we can guess that one. What else have we got? Queries for debugger information. So it could be trying to find out if something is monitoring the system. Uh, looks at the monitors of the computer name. Contacts domains we know about. Spawns new processes. Yes. Uh, spawns new processes that are not known child processes. Interesting. Okay, there's a few things here I'm going to have to come back and look on. Creates a new process. Yes. So it creates, obviously, uses the bits admin service. It drops a file. That's where it gets interesting. We know it's a PE file. Don't know too much more about the file. Found URLs in memory. Yep, we saw them. So that all makes sense. Um, not a lot there I didn't already expect. As uh, far as the actual desktop goes, just a black screen. That's probably just the W script kicking off. And here are the files it uses. Network analysis. Extracted strings. Hmm. Here's the PE executable. All right. Now, this is interesting. Extended file details. We can find out a little bit more about the executable that gets downloaded. 
Now, why is this of interest to me? Number one, I don't have to go up and download this executable now. And number two, I can't. Looks like all those domains have been contacted and shut down. But this hash has been seen before. So let's load up the hash and find out what it was. So this is the executable now. Interesting. Tell me about it. We've got... It's malicious, yes. It's got an Adaware flag on it. Okay. Using my privileges as a uh, member of Hybrid Analysis, I'm downloading the binaries now for those executables. So I've taken the first of those two executables, and from what I can get so far, um, it is detected as malware, it is detected as some sort of an ad or spyware tool, it's got Trojans involved, it's got backdoors, my goodness, there's a lot here to look at. So this will be one of those times when I take some of these words and I start googling them to figure out what's going on. Let's have a look at the details, see if there's anything else that stands out here. Okay, nothing, I'm only briefly looking at it, let's have a look at the behaviour. Opens a whole bunch of files, opens all of the registries. Community, what have they got to say about it? Okay, we've got some people who have scanned it. Um, Alright. So from here, I've now got the binary files that it downloaded. They are exe files. I can go up and run them through hybrid analysis and take it further to figure out what they do. But that's not the whole point of today. The whole point of today, I wanted to show you uh, three things, an alternative way to download files using wget, which is simple from the command line, just wget space, and then download the file URL. Um, I'll point to that in the description. The second thing is about an NTFS stream, seeing as this customer of mine has brought this to me to show me something I hadn't expected to see, which was a VBS file triggering from a task, which is trying to run a hidden VBS, sorry, um, NTFS stream on another volume, and then, of course, downloading the executables, and I wanted to show you also that as a member of Hybrid Analysis, not only can I run these executables, but I can download the payloads. So even though the website for the PNG files had been shut down, I was able to go and get the code for the executables and have a bit of a little look to see what they actually did. So I don't quite know how this task got created. Um, I would suspect that they've clicked on some attachment in an email. Um, it then created, obviously, the task. Now, you can create ADS um, alternative streams by using the copy process at the command line. You can also do it with a VBS script or write your own C script or Python, whatever you wish. So creating a stream is not difficult. Um, obviously, at some point, the malware must have copied that VBS file into the stream. I'm assuming to avoid detection of some kind. Maybe whoever wrote it couldn't get it to trigger until next reboot, and they wanted to keep it hidden until the next reboot. Not quite sure. And then it downloads some executables. Um, maybe it also loads some more into the registry whether they're playing around with the Defender and the AVG and things like that, so that it can download those executables without triggering any notice, so you don't know what's happened. But that's today's uh, little run-through for you. So we've got an NTFS stream. Uh, are they dangerous? Well, yeah, it can be dangerous. Uh, can you remotely trigger them? Yep, you saw some VBS code there that can trigger it, and the person that hit a VBS, hid, sorry, a VBS file into a text file. You can obviously, with NTFS or ADS streams, hide text files in text files or JPEGs in text files or anything you like. You can have two files with the same accessible name and one data stream hiding behind in the fork. So interesting. I want to thank uh, that person for sending me access to remotely look at their machine. And if anybody else out there has anything strange they want pulled apart or looked at, let me know. I love pulling apart this stuff and I know that you all love to see it pulled apart and also awaken your inner anti-malware being because i'm sure some of you have never seen streams before and never seen half the things i play with so again a big shout out to uh, malware for hedgehogs thank you very much for your comments and also don't forget my sponsor the virus doctor he detects removes and pulls out all of these things in the system before i get to them and pull them apart and now you've got malware analysis for hedgehogs who goes at extra level and pulls it right down Sometimes to assembly, but goes through the PE headers and things like that. So, between the three of us, we got you covered. Have a great day.